This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. I'd like to welcome you all here this morning. It is the 14th Sunday after Pentecost. Um, today is our tradition on the fifth Sunday of the month, if it's not a festival, is to sing the ancient uh, morning prayer service matins. Um, that is in our from the Lutheran service book. Our hymns today will be 688, 531, and 861. Let us rise and sing the opening hymn, Come Follow Me. our sins in the presence of God and one another. I confess to God Almighty, before the whole company of heaven and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my own fault, by my own most grievous fault. Wherefore, I pray God Almighty to have mercy on me, forgive me all my sins and bring me to everlasting life. Amen.
Almighty and merciful Lord grant you pardon, forgiveness, and remission of all your sins. Amen. Let us rise. for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, take me not away. Know that for your sake I bear reproach. Your words were found, and I ate them. And your words became a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of revelers, nor did I rejoice. I sat alone, because your hand was upon me. For you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Will you be to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail? Therefore thus says the Lord, if you return, I will restore you, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall be as my mouth. They shall turn to you, but you shall not turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, declares the Lord. 
I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is taken from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 12. Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be conceited. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink, for by doing so you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the word of the Lord. Rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his life? Or what shall a man give in return for his life? For the Son of Man is going to come with his angels in the glory of his Father. And then he will repay each person according to what he has done. Truly I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated for the children's message. Hello, hello. Good morning or afternoon or whenever you're watching or whenever you woke up. You know, could be morning for some of you. What a great place to be in God's house here again today. And we have Caden visiting today. So I reminded you, I gave you a little inside scoop. You are the youngest one here, I think. Mr. Head fools a lot of people, but I think you got him. So I'm kind of talking to you, but I'm talking to everybody. And I was amazed today. Did you hear about all the geese? You heard about the geese? I mean, you know what geese are, right? What are geese? They, you've, seen them, you've seen them fly? They fly. What, what shape do they fly in? Yeah. The letter. What letter is that? U. A V, yeah. Usually like one side's longer. You know why? You know why one? Because it has more geese in it. But that's it's, it's, that happens sometimes. But how do you know they're coming? Are you always looking up in the sky and you see them coming? You just catch your eye. You ever hear them? Yeah. They're kind of obnoxious, aren't they? Geese. They're obnoxious whether they're on the ground, because a lot of people don't like geese because they leave things behind. But 
you hear them, right? They're honking. They're honking at each other. And geese, I did a little bit of research. They are amazing. They, you know why? They, they do fly in a V for a reason. Because that shape, it's kind of shaped like an airplane, really, right? It's an aerodynamic shape. And the lead goose helps all the other geese by taking that lead and that shape, all the other geese have it easier. It's like if you're on a bike ride right behind a person and it's easier to ride you get a draft and they actually get lift it makes it so much easier to fly so he's pretty important that front goose you think he flies the whole way there you think he leads the whole way you know what nope he gets tired he gets tired so he drops back and another goose will fly up and take the lead and they take turns and you know what happens I found this out this is pretty amazing if a goose gets hurt He'll fly to the ground if he can't fly anymore. And two other geese will go with him. The three of them will go there, and they will stay with that goose until he's recovered or until he can't go on, and they'll join another group of geese, and they'll fly off in that pattern. But they help each other out. And did you hear that in the message today? Did you hear anything about helping each other out? Yeah. Not only helping each other out, that's what we're reminded to do we're told in Romans, Paul's talking to the people of God and he's talking to the Jewish people and he's talking to the Gentiles, the people in Rome, because they're thinking we've got to follow the rules. But it really doesn't matter that we follow the rules. They have all kinds of rules and we have all kinds of rules today, don't we? More rules every day, it seems like. And the rules change and you don't know what you're supposed to do. But this is even different because this is so special because... One person took the cross. Who was that? Jesus. We are saved because of Jesus. Not because of following the rules, but that's what Paul reminds us. He says, love one another with affection. He says, outdo each other by showing honor to other people. But then he says, don't, don't get carried away outdoing each other. He says, don't be haughty. You know what haughty means? It's kind of like, proud or like you ever heard somebody say you're a one-upper I had somebody tell me because I'm an engineer so they told me I'm a one-upper you don't want to be a one-upper and I try not to be everybody tries not to be but everybody likes to have the answer right everybody likes to oh I knew that you hear something new and it's like yeah I knew that everybody has the you don't get on social media do you nope you know why because everybody out there already has the right answer. Everybody's a one-upper. Everybody has the right answer. But don't be, that's what it means to be haughty, kind of. Don't be haughty. But associate with the lowly. You know, take in that information. Help each other out. And that's what we're reminded to do. Because Jesus saved us. And we should live to follow Jesus. But it's not for our own good. We are saved because of him. Will you say a prayer? Maybe everybody will help you. You gave all the answers, so maybe they'll help you out and say the words after me of a prayer. Heavenly Father, help us use our gifts to serve you and help one another. Thank you for our salvation through your Son, Jesus. Amen. Thanks, Kate. We continue with the sermon hymn, Hail Thou Once Despised Jesus, on page 7.
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jacob is in the kitchen making scrambled eggs. He cracks the eggs into a water glass, stirs in some milk and cheese and bacon bits, and he beats the eggs with a spoon while the big frying pan is heating on the stove with a hunk of butter melting in it. Jacob's wife Katie comes in and sees what he's doing. She loves Jacob. She wants the best for him, and he's doing it all wrong. So Katie takes the frying pan off the stove, puts it in the sink, grabs the glass of eggs out of his hands, pours it down the drain, gets the proper mixing bowl and whisk and the small frying pan. And she says to him scoldingly, that's not how I would do it. My way is better. This is what Peter does to Jesus today in our gospel reading regarding something infinitely more important than omelets. Peter had just confessed that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and Peter is right on the mark. He's confessing the right thing. Jesus commends Peter and says, on this rock he will build his church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Peter is saying the right things. But then Jesus begins to explain what it means to be the Christ. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many kinds of things suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. This is the first time that Jesus tells the disciples what's ahead. He'll tell them twice more before arriving in Jerusalem. These are often called passion predictions, a prediction of Jesus' suffering and death. But calling this a passion prediction is missing something. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. It is a passion and resurrection prediction. Jesus gives the disciples both the bad news and the good news. Jesus tells them plainly what is going to happen. But Peter is having none of it. Peter basically tells Jesus, that's not how I would do it. My way is better. Far be it from you, Lord. This shall never happen to you. Why does Peter say that? What is his motivation? And this is where it gets tricky. Peter loves Jesus. Peter wants to protect Jesus. Peter is motivated by love, but we see here how the demands of love can get things horribly wrong. Because of Peter's love for Jesus, Peter rejects Jesus' words. And this is from Satan. Peter wants to take control of Jesus' words, do them the way that Peter wants them done. Peter, out of love, wants to prevent Jesus from going to the cross. Peter, out of love, believes his way is better. But Jesus turned to Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me. For you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. We are very much guided by our emotions, our feelings. Peter is a very emotional person, but his emotions are not a good guide. Peter's emotions lead him into sin. Love is not where you get your theology, your understanding of God. Your feelings and emotions are not where you find truth. You find truth in faith. Because faith has nothing to say about itself. Faith only speaks about what it is given in God's Word. Faith is focused on the object of faith given to you by God. 
your feelings, your emotions are focused on yourself and they can easily lead you into false belief. The demands of love can get things terribly wrong. Love can get you to call good evil and evil good. It can have you rejecting God's word in order to conform to the ever-changing ways of the world. It can have you very concerned about the things of man while ignoring the things of God. God gives you his gifts of forgiveness and eternal life with his words. And his words do what they say. I baptize you. I forgive you all your sins. Take, eat, this is my body. Take, drink, this is my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Jesus' truth is not an easy truth. Jesus' truth is that there is a penalty for sin that needs to be paid. Jesus' truth is what we learn in Hebrews 9, verse 22. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. Jesus' declaration that he will suffer and be killed and on the third day rise from the dead is the hard truth about sin. But it is also the great good news that in his resurrection, Jesus conquers sin and death. Faith does not talk about itself, but only what it is given. Faith comes first from God and love flows out of faith. Love follows faith because love is the fulfilling of the law. In Romans 13.10, love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. It's very easy to fall into Peter's error of letting love drive your theology rather than letting love flow out of faith. When love drives your theology, you can quickly fall into the satanic practice of commandeering God's word and making them say whatever you want them to say. Letting love drive your theology brings you into a theology of glory in which you emphasize your own works and your own reasons. The late Reverend Dr. Norman Nagel, a retired professor at Concordia Seminary St. Louis, former dean of the chapel at Valparaiso University, he was not known for mincing his words spoken in an Australian accent. He says it like this, Peter speaks for Satan even with a heart full of love. This will never happen to you. You can confess saying all the right words with a heart full of love for an alternative Christ and be the mouthpiece for Satan. The Apostle Peter falls into this satanic trap. So be alert. Don't think that you are immune. Be on guard against letting love drive your theology. And as Jesus instructs, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Christians under persecution in other countries know much more clearly what it means to take up their cross and follow Jesus. Following Jesus is not a promise of an easy life. It is a promise of eternal life. You want to find your own way, but Jesus is the only way. Jesus clearly teaches that following him means following him. If anyone would come after me, follow me for my sake. Faith follows Jesus. Love flows from faith. Deny yourself and follow Jesus. Denying yourself is not a popular message in the world in in which normally you're encouraged to indulge yourself, pamper yourself, fulfill yourself because you've earned it, you deserve it. But Jesus says, deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. 
your sinful nature is not much of a fan of denying yourself. You're much more likely to want to deny the cross. Your sinful nature so much wants to believe that the cross is not really necessary. Your sinful nature so much wants to believe that your sins are not that big a deal, that you can take care of it yourself. You don't need to do it Jesus' way because you have a better way. You want to believe that you can do it yourself. But you cannot. You need Jesus. You need the cross. This is why you don't follow your feelings. You follow Jesus. You follow Jesus because sin is serious. Deadly serious. And there is no forgiveness without the shedding of blood. Thank God Jesus is who He says He is. And He does what He says He will do. Jesus goes to the cross as the ultimate blood sacrifice, shedding His blood for you. Jesus rises from the dead in victory over sin and death. Peter rebukes Jesus, and Jesus rebukes Peter. But Jesus does not give up on Peter, even after Peter denies him three times. Jesus does not give up on Peter. Jesus forgives Peter and restores Peter three times. Feed my lambs. Tend my sheep. Feed my sheep. Jesus does not give up on you. Jesus does not deny the cross. Jesus does not avoid the cross. Jesus goes to the cross for you. Jesus rises from the dead for you, for the forgiveness of your sins. Jesus does it His way and gives His gift of forgiveness to you in His Word and in His sacraments of baptism and Holy Communion. Do not let your feelings or emotions control your theology. Your faith is not in your emotions. Your faith is in Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God, who gave Himself as the offering for your sin and promises you forgiveness and eternal life. Amen. And now may the peace of God, the peace that is beyond understanding, keep your hearts and minds in true faith until our Lord Jesus returns in glory. Amen. We rise for prayers. In our prayers today, remember Sheila Barbary battling brain cancer, Kim Williams' brother Scott who has bone cancer, Jim Zartner hospitalized at UC Westchester uh, recovering from a, a broken hip femur area, for Kippy Gelly who's broken her, uh, broken her leg, for the family of Jim Hinkle, a friend of Doug Urbex who died this last week, for Pat Lee, a friend of Ruth Selmeyer's recovering from a third back surgery, for Jack Head, Larry and Mike's father struggling to recover from a broken hip, and for Larry Scheidler, a friend of Natalie Reeder's who's having a kidney removed. Knowing the will of God that all would come to the knowledge of your Son and find salvation in Christ, let us pray on behalf of our parish community and for all people according to their needs. For our faith and faithfulness, especially for those persecuted for the cause of Christ, and for our strength in time of trial, and for us to persevere in grace in the day of trouble, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the church, Jerusalem on high, our mother in Christ until Christ is fully formed in us. For the pastors who serve us, that they may be faithful stewards of God's mysteries. And for those at home and abroad who bring the message of, message of salvation to those who have not heard, let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, have mercy. For Donald, our president, Michael, our governor, and all legislators and civil servants, for those who must render judgment and impose punishments upon lawbreakers, and for those who work for peace among the nations, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For favorable weather and for those who tend the soil and harvest its fruits, for business and industry, service workers and artisans, for generosity toward, toward those in need, and for the unemployed and underemployed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those married, that they would live in fidelity to their vows and promises. For parents, as they teach their children to know and love the Lord. For single adults, that they may find fulfillment in their service to others. And for our lives together, showing the love of Christ one to another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For grace to take up the cross and follow the Lord wherever he leads. For courage in the face of challenge and adversity. And for compassion and harmony in our life together. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For there are remembrance of the saints and grace to follow their example of faith. For God to grant us a place with them in the fellowship and for our eternal life in God's kingdom without end. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Sheila, Scott, Jim, Kippy, Pat, Jack, Larry, and Jim's family. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, you have forgiven our sins and delivered us from death through our Lord Jesus Christ. Continue to pour out your mercy upon us and grant to us all good things needful to this body and life and keep from us all things harmful. From you, through you, and to you are all things, O Lord. Holy Father, mighty God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, whom with the Holy Spirit you are one Lord, one God, now and forevermore. Amen. And we sing the Te Deum.
art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. O oh Lord, hear my prayer. Let my cry come to Almighty God, your Son willingly endured the agony and shame of the cross for our redemption. Grant us courage to take up our cross daily and follow him wherever he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the end of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Please be seated for just a few announcements. We have an usher sign up in the narthex if anyone's interested in helping to usher 
uh, at this service or one of the Sunday services, please sign up. Coming up September the 13th, we'll have a concert with Dave Anderson and Roger Walk. Um, and that will be uh, in here at 6 p.m. We'll have a chicken dinner outside on the picnic tables, um, weather permitting, at 5 o'clock on, on the 13th. Altar Flower sign-up sheet is wide open for September. You have first dibs on the September flower sheet. So if you're interested in signing up to, for flowers, do uh, please sign up their back. The sign-up sheet's back in the narthex. Any other announcements that I have missed? So go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.